Hello students, in the previous video, we studied the thallus structure and asexual reproduction in albigo. So in this video, we shall study the sexual reproduction, sexual reproduction in albigo. This is Rekha from Government Science College, Bangalore. So sexual reproduction in albigo. So in albigo, sexual reproduction takes place by oogamous method. Oogamous type of sexual reproduction takes place in albigo. The male sex organ is called as the antheridium and the female sex organ is called as the ugonium. So antheridium and ugonium or the male and the female sex organs. So these sex organs, they are produced inside the host tissue as albigo is an obligate. Albigo is an obligate parasite. It is present inside the living host. So inside the host tissue, in between, that is in the intercellular spaces, in the intercellular spaces, these antheridium and ugonium are produced. So these are produced at the end of the growing season of the host tissue. So externally, externally, when these antheridia and ugonia are produced, externally it is indicated outside by the formation of, by hypertrophy. Hypertrophy means it is the swelling, excess growth or malformation of the host tissue malformation of the host tissue so how this antheridium or the ugonium arises inside the host tissue so ugonium which is the female sex organ so it arises from the intercalary or the terminal swelling of the hyphae. So the hyphae in the middle or towards the tip of the hyphae the globular swelling occurs and to this globular swelling, swelling so all the protoplasm and the nuclei it migrates inside and it is cut off from the hyphae by the formation of septa. So sooner or later a elongated club shaped and elongated club shaped slender structure arises from the hyphae and it grows next to the ugonium and this is called as the antheridium so to this antheridium again all the May number of the protoplasm and the nuclei. The nuclei is 6 to 12 in number and here you have 100 nuclei. So they grow side by side. So in the ugonium initially it has a number of nuclei and the cytoplasm is evenly distributed. But later as the ugonium matures there is a differentiation of the protoplasm into the central, the central centroplasm, the central centroplasm, centroplasm which is very dense and the peripheral, the peripheral or marginal periplasm which is vacuolated. So at maturity the ugonium it gets differentiated into two regions, the central centroplasm and the peripheral periplasm. So both of which contain a number of nuclei, a number of nuclei. So now what happens and by the side of which you see the presence of this antheridium, antheridium which consists of 6 to 12 nuclei. So when this antheridium comes in contact with the ugonium, a dark, dense, 
structure dark dense structure arises in the middle and this is called as ceno centra central so this is about the formation of ugonium and the anthridium so now let us study about the fertilization how this fertilization takes place so during fertilization what happens in the ugonium a number of nuclei are present so but at maturity at maturity only a single nucleus a single nucleus in the center remains and the other nuclei which are present in the centroplasm as well as in the periplasm it degenerates so at this time it produces a small papilla like outgrowth which is called as the receptive receptive papilla that is the receiving spot so sooner or later the anthridium the anthridium which lies next to the ugonium it produces a slender tube which pierces through this receptive wall it passes the centroplasm and reaches the periplasm so although there are a number of nuclei here only one male nuclei passes through this fertilization tube and it releases this male nucleus and this male nucleus fuses with this female nucleus resulting in the formation of a zygote which is called as the oospore oospore is diploid now so now this fertilization tube and the receptive papillae it gets degenerated so now you have the diploid nucleus so this oospore this oospore it undergoes a period of rest and it develops a thick walled thick wall around it and it gets differentiated into two layers the outer layer is called as exo exosporium and the inner layer is called as endosporium exosporium is thick and warty and the endosporium is thin and smooth see all these changes are taking place inside the host tissues in the intercellular spaces of the host tissue so this oospore it comes out only after the death or the degeneration of the host tissue so the next step is the germination the germination of the oospore how this oospore germinates once it comes out of the host now it takes rest for some time so this diploid nucleus it undergoes a number of divisions resulting in it undergoes meiosis the reduction division and it produces a number of nuclei by mitotic divisions resulting in around 100 nuclei so now what happens is so this is the oospore oospore with a thin endosporium and the thick exosporium it is present in the wall of the ugonium wall of the ugonium so now this undergoes a number of division resulting in a number of nuclei so now what happens is this exospore the exospore which is present inside the wall of the ugonium it ruptures and this endosporium it gives rise to a vesicle so now this nuclei it undergoes it gets metamorphosized the protoplasm present here it undergoes a number of divisions resulting in the formation of a segmented protoplasmic bits 
each containing each containing a number of a nuclei like this so the protoplasm it gets segmented into a number of pieces and these pieces it gets metamorphosized into a kidney shaped biflagellate zoospore which passes into this vesicle which is formed by the endosporium endosporium so to this vesicle all the protoplasmic bits which gets transformed into zoospores they migrate so these zoospores they come out they come out by the rupture of this wall so this zoospores it swims for some time so these spores zoospores they are kidney shaped biflagellate spores they swim for some time and they become encysted encysted in the sense it becomes rounded rounded and it loses its flagella so now this encysted zoospore it germinates and it produces a germ tube so this germ tube then it enters the host tissue host tissue in the sense the plants through the stomata through the stomata and then it infects a new host so this is about the sexual reproduction in albigo so now we shall study the life cycle the life cycle of albigo life cycle of albigo so the albigo the mycelium the vegetative structure the vegetative plant body is the mycelium so it produces asexually and results in the formation of sporangiophore or conidiophore which gives rise to sporangiophore or conidiophore which gives rise to sporangia or conidia so this germinates germinates by producing a germ tube the germ tube germ tube and if it is an indirect germination it produces the zoospores if it is a direct germination it functions as conidia the zoospores it takes a rest and it is called as the encysted zoospores and later it germinates later it germinates and it produces the mycelium so the mycelium it produces sporangiophore or conidiophore which produces the sporangia or conidia the sporangia or conidia it germinates so if it is a direct germination then it produces a germ tube and it produces it infects a new host then you call it as then the spore is called as the conidia so if it produces indirectly then you call it as sporangia so sporangia it produces the zoospores it takes rest it germinates and it produces the new mycelium so if the spore germinates immediately and it produces if it infects the host plant then you call it as conidia so if it germinates indirectly by the formation of zoospores then you call it as sporangia so this is about the asexual asexual reproduction so coming to sexual reproduction so sexual reproduction as you all know it takes place by the antheridium the antheridium antheridium and oogonium the male and the female sex organs so now the antheridium produces 
the male nucleus and the oogonium produces the female female nucleus so male nucleus and female nucleus so this male and the female nucleus they fuse with one another resulting in the formation of oospore so oospore then it undergoes meiosis or reduction division then it produces the zoospores the zoospores it takes a rest and it is called as encysted zoospore this encysted zoospore it undergoes germination germination and it produces a new mycelium so this is about sexual reproduction thank you